welcome. Today my interview is with Julia Saporin and she's a senior teacher here at Eugene Yoga and uh, she's been leading um, trainings and teaching classes for many years so we're going to get a chance to talk with her about her experience. Um, also she's just completed teaching and leading her first uh, yoga teacher training program, a 200 hour course uh, as a co-teacher and as the lead teacher as well. So I wanted to get her thoughts on that. And also she has a lot of experience leading and facilitating retreats, going to local places like the coast or a place nearby the local city, and also international, um, going off-site to Mexico or to Hawaii. So I think you'll really enjoy this if those topics will interest you. So let's start with your life story and um, mm. what brought you to yoga and how has it changed you? Oh, gosh. That probably, we have to go back to like the mid-70s. Wow. And uh, that was a time when Be Here Now had come out, but written by mm. Ram Das. And yes. so my whole group of friends, we were, uh, that was of interest to us. Mm. Um, you know, we were exploring music and dance and altered states of consciousness. And so Be Here Now was a nice way to think about what are some other ways of being and then shortly thereafter, Yogi Bhajan came to our area oh. and was teaching Kundalini Yoga to high school students. Maybe oh. not the best thing for high school students. <laughs> Why is that too intense? Uh, or? It was a lot. You know, it was, you're taking mm. somebody who's already in the hormone, uh, okay. traumatized oh, zone, okay. and you're doing this very fiery yoga. Kind of amping them up a little bit. Very amping them up, mm. and I did have kind of a... I guess you could call it a kundalini awakening in the middle of my seventh period art class. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> we, fun. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. It really wasn't pretty. And Interesting. I, uh, I don't know if you want to hear that yeah, story. Yeah, I'd love to. I was doing some, making some plates, you know, on the wheel. Okay. And so I was centering, and I was using all my mindfulness tools, and they were drawing on the rack, and I came in at one point in somebody else's class just to see how they were drawing and somebody had smooshed my plates with their little piece of greenware and had crumpled one of my plates and I had this primal scream just from deep in the earth all the way out just like this scream from the back of the room and it was one of those Southwest Airline moments, like, would you like to get away? So <laughs> um, so I learned, I told Yogi Bhajan, I was like, what was that? And he, he just laughed. And he said, I told you, you're supposed to drink more water. You know, it's like, <laughs> wow, this stuff is real. So that was kind of my first introduction. Like, I had a lot of respect for Kundalini Yoga at that point, mm. And I continued to practice. And... Um, but then I, I kind of was getting the message, this was not my form of yoga. This was mm -hmm. too intense for my body, mm -hmm. and I left it for a while. And then uh, several years later, I came back and started a, a Hatha yoga practice. Mm -hmm. And um, by that time, I had developed a meditation practice that mm -hmm. was pretty strong. Yeah. And yoga was this nice kind of adjunct to meditation. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so maybe for the last um, 20 years, having a fairly, sometimes more rigorous practice, I think I'm becoming a more gentle practitioner, more mindful, less interested in doing the wild and crazy poses that I used to do. Yeah, the so, yoga journal cover poses. and the, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those people don't inspire me anymore, actually. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that's a whole other conversation, but just seeing how um, there's a teacher, uh, Jay Brown, who says, gentle is the new advanced. That was my line, Nate. That really? was my new line. <laughs> there was a person in our 200-hour training, uh, this was a long time ago, who, who I suggested. He was really trying to do this vigorous yoga and was striving so hard. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why don't you come to my gentle class? And he said, well, I'm really a level three yogi. Mm -hmm. It's like, a level three yogi? Is this where yoga, is this where your yoga practice is taking you? Yeah. That that's, you're classifying it like this. Yeah. And I said, I really recommend that just come, just show up. Mm -hmm. And he got some benefits. So, yeah. yeah, and I said, gentle yoga is the new advanced yoga. Cool. So that's my mindset now. And that yeah. I, I really believe is true. There's some truth in that. What has uh, really influenced that shift in perspective for you? Mm. 
I think exploring the idea of ahimsa and that and part of in, in alignment yoga pointing out one of the key points is that we need to stop hurting ourselves in yoga and we do all this striving all this um, over efforting for what mm-hmm. and could it could you maybe back off some of that you know looking at some of the research about there are more torn labrums in yoga now there are more um, people having more joint laxity and there's a lot of um, harm that we're doing to ourselves in yoga in the name of yoga yeah. so I think a gentler practice dialing back to really letting the body be the teacher mm-hmm. let the mind be the student Wonderful. Yeah. and so when this is bullying us around all day you know at our job or whatever we're doing it's dictating to us what we should be doing and the body follows. But yoga is really a time to come back and say, hmm, rather than bullying my leg into big toe pose, mm-hmm. you know, supta and gustasana, it's like, well, let's just see, let's just observe the natural movement of that leg. Mm-hmm. And where, where do I start feeling a little bit of a tug? So, um, yeah. Yeah. And was that through kind of personal experience? Were there teachers that influenced that as well or that you feel more aligned with now? Yeah, I'd say that the teacher that inspires me the most is Scott Anderson, mm-hmm. Alignment Yoga. Yeah. And um, there's, it's hard to argue with somebody who's got over 90,000 hours of experience teaching. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's done his homework. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that when he says something a cue it's not because he heard about it yeah. it's because he's researched down to the detail and he's seen it incredible research and sorted out fact from fiction mm. so it's pretty reliable and then I test it out in my own body and see the result and go yeah sure enough that that works for me wonderful mm-hmm. and um, so you've been how long have you been teaching uh, you said you've started practicing in the 70s and yeah I I, coming to yoga, teaching yoga is a fairly new thing, maybe in the last five years, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, I just happened to be a uh, uh, teacher here suggested, you know, there's a teacher training coming, coming up, why don't mm-hmm. you take that? It's like, huh, I hadn't really thought about that. I've been a school teacher for 26 years. Mm, yeah. So I thought, well, I'm a school teacher, maybe I could make the transition to being a yoga teacher. Mm. I'd retired, so... It was kind of a natural segue, next thing to do. Wonderful. Yeah. How has your practice changed from uh, primarily being focused on t- teaching uh, yourself or taking classes to then taking the role as a teacher? Mm. It has definitely upped my game mm-hmm. in terms of deepening my own practice and really exploring and knowing. And there's a lot of stuff that I know intellectually, yeah. but then really knowing it deeply in my body. And I think once you become a teacher, the best way to learn is to teach something. Yep, agreed. So I think there was a big learning curve for me to really dive deep into the curriculum and into the material. And uh, that took more time than I expected. Mm. Uh, and it was it's wonderful. And now I have more questions and... It has its own momentum of things I want to be learning and exploring, so. Yeah. um, Well, I think it it sounds like it must have been really a luxury that a lot of teachers don't have to have such a huge um, background of your own personal experience Mm -hmm. before stepping into the role of a teacher. Mm -hmm. Would you say that helped you make that transition uh, more easily, or how did that influence you? Yeah. um, I had taught elementary school for 26 years and I had a pretty sizable toolbox you know so this kid needs this this kid Mm. needs this this kid needs this this kid needs that and so I knew what to do with all of that so learning yoga I had I knew what it was like to have that level of competence but in an area where I was still developing my content so there was a little disparity between I know the quality of holding space that I want to have mm-hmm. and also what can I do for your shoulder. Right. And so that's been my learning curve. You know, my hip hurts. Mm-hmm. So third grade didn't prepare me for that. 
Right. So that's been my learning curve. So um, being a teacher definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, a school teacher, or any other kind of teacher that you person might be, um, there's that sense of um, how do you get organized? How do you plan things? How do you get your materials in order? Who are your resources? All that kind of thing is um, help me with my 200-hour teacher training program. Great. And I understand the program that you've just led, the 200-hour program, is based on Scott Anderson's Alignment Yoga program. Yeah. Um, so how did you um, <clears throat> how did you incorporate that, and, and did you have to also add upon that, or certainly kind of make it your own in a sentence as well? Mm. Mm-hmm. He had a, he's got a beautiful curriculum. It's really well organized. There are eight modules. There's an agenda for each day, you know, and, and here are the topics. Here are the main key points to teach. Mm-hmm. But then it's, okay, so those main key points, how are you going to teach them? Right. And most of that is, I'm not inventing. I really don't want to invent anything. Yeah. But my own practice has enlightened me in some ways. So that, yeah, it has become my own. And there's still times when I call up Scott and say, well, what about this? And I'm discovering this. And what do you think about that? Mm. I'll get some good feedback about that from him. That's really nice. I think that's one of the the sad things is a lot of the yoga programs, you know, you can't call up teachers who've passed away anymore and say, well, we have these new discoveries. You know, we're seeing these issues come up. What do we do? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's a wonderful thing to have a, a living teacher um, who you can discuss things with. Oh, I think critical, mm-hmm. really critical to have some resources. And, uh, you know, there'd be times right before class sometimes I'm like texting Scott, you know, what about this? There's this mm-hmm. one more little detail. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's important. Um, other things to learn, other things to know about doing the teacher training is just to have a resource team. Mm. You know, your job, my job, is to come in as the teacher. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not responsible for the flyers, mm. for getting the emails out, for you know, making sure everything else in the background is happening smoothly. So I was really fortunate that we have such a great team here at Eugene Yoga yeah. that, that makes it so easy for me, you know, walk in the door and teach. That's wonderful. I mean, I think you're you're right. That is a luxury. I think a lot of teachers don't have that. They're the ones selling the course, promoting it, you know, teaching it, following up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that's that certainly will test our yoga <laughs> personally. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. that's wonderful to have that kind of support to then be able to focus in on the teaching. Mm-hmm. What were the biggest lessons that you learned through leading that 200-hour teacher training program? Yeah, so... I'd have to say the most important, crucial factor was keeping my own meditation practice going. Mm-hmm. Um, essential, essential, and deep in it. Uh, to hold space for somebody, uh, for a whole, for a class is one thing, but when people are learning in an environment and there's a lot of interaction and people working together, there's there's a lot of space to hold for people and that may be an unfamiliar term for some people but um, you're providing a safe container for people mm-hmm. and that's that it's got to come from your practice mm-hmm. and to me that was that was huge um, and then also making sure I was getting my sleep eating well being organized, I didn't want to come in and just feel like I was flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah. So it really took some time to make sure, do I understand the key points that I'm, I'm teaching? Yeah. And are there any holes um, that I need to plug in? And what can I do to plug those holes in? Yeah. What would you, walk us through your own personal meditation practice. Mm. What would that consist of? Hmm. I like to spend... Um, a good hour in the morning if I can. I like to get up in the morning. Bef- in the summer, it's m- much easier. Right. Get up in the morning, go outside, and just greet the day. You know, a little um, little stretch and um, make a cup of tea, sit outside, watch the sunrise. And But then there's, there's some quiet time. I've been enjoying um, 
open awareness meditations, mm. sound meditations, just awareness of bones, maybe sometimes I just pick a bone, my sit mm. bone or my collarbone or, uh, <laughs> you know, if I'm understand, if I'm working with, uh, we teach about the organs, yeah. so I might just like, well, how's my liver today? You know, and just do an, an object meditation, you know, mm. anything can be a focus of meditation. Sometimes thoughts mm-hmm. are a form of meditation. What, not that I'm consciously thinking, but who is it that's observing those thoughts? And just being aware of them. Or emotions. It just kind of depends on the day. That's a newer practice for me. I do have a, a longer time practice um, that um, oh, it goes back to 77, 1977. And it's, it's a seated meditation. There are different techniques for turning your awareness inside mm-hmm. and um, viewing that inner landscape. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. But that's a nice hour-long practice. Mm. Um, this newer meditation that comes out of Minga Rinpoche. Okay. Um, it's been really helpful. You know, I think we get stuck in like, oh, no, I don't know if it's stuck is the right word, but this is my this is the meditation I've done for 20 some odd years. 40, almost 40 years. Oh my gosh. Mm. So the thought of like maybe trying something different. Really, it, it was good to kind of freshen up the perspective and yeah. like, oh, keeping my eyes open, that's a really different experience. Mm. I'm much more alert. I really like having my eyes open now. And so, um, so it's nice to explore different avenues, get out of your own comfort zone a little bit. Mm. Sometimes there are good things there. So. Nice. Well, I, I know from my personal experience, I think meditation is an incredible complement to yoga. And, mm-hmm. and really, I mean, I think it's, it, you know, looking at the purpose of yoga to silence the mind in, in one interpretation. You know, I mm-hmm. think that can be done in so many ways. So um, I can see how that could really help uh, prepare you for yoga and for teaching. Yeah. You know, I would challenge that concept a little bit, that yoga mm-hmm. meditation is to silence the mind. Mm-hmm. I think it's more about... The more I practice, I haven't had any luck quieting my mind, mm. really, truly. There's always something going on in the background. Right. I think if I can just notice, be, you know, the, the stream of thoughts are going through down the stream, and I might be caught in that stream. Mm. That's not so helpful. But if I can crawl up onto the shore and just watch that stream of thoughts go by, mm. and emotions and sensations... And just observe them without judgment, Mm -hmm. without trying to make them go away. Mm. To me, that's an object of meditation that, or a goal, that I'm not trying to make anything go away. Mm. I'm trying to let things be. Wonderful. I like that interpretation. That's a wonderful analogy of sitting on the riverbank and watching the thoughts. If I told you right now, I said, so Nate, we're going to meditate. I want you to clear your mind of thoughts. Just <laughs> clear your mind. Mm. What happens? I think it almost makes more thoughts happen. Right. Mm. So now if I say, Nate, I want you to generate some thoughts. Just make a thought. Mm. Make a thought. Mm. What? It's like the, they're like the bubbles just disappear as soon as you. It's like it's hard to generate a thought. Did That's you have interesting. that experience? Yeah, that that is kind of it. Kind of froze on a thought, and uh, it was almost like the mind was suddenly like exposed. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, I'm being watched here. Right. Uh, That's any. I've never done that before. That's interesting. Yeah. So kind of making peace with uh, just sitting on the shore and observing. Oh, look at me today. I'm. My mind today is busy, it's got checklists, or oh, today I'm being distracted by the noise, or or, oh, it's pretty still today, or I'm worried today, Mm. this moment. And that's all okay, it's accepting that. I like that, it's almost like a little reverse psychology, Mm. to try to come up with a thought. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it is. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, what What were some of the real gems of teaching? What what things really were satisfying and um, wonderful about mm. that experience. Teaching the 200 hour? Yeah. Wow. 
I think one of the big highlights, and I think this is like a hallmark of alignment yoga, is that people learn what is the benefit of this pose. Why do we do? Why do we turn the arm this way and not this way? Mm. Why do we bend the knees? Why do we do this pose? What's the benefit of this pose? Mm. And I think um, that really equipped people for their own practice, whether they wanted to become teachers or they were just taking the training because they wanted to deepen their own practice. Mm. There are a lot of people in teacher training programs that have no intention of becoming a teacher. That's true. And um, I really welcome those people because this is a great program if you just want to have a good, solid home practice. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my favorite thing is that, you know, you learn here, well, here are some basics about doing a healthy back bend. How to do, you know, what about forward bends? What's a sequence that's, um, why do we do back bends before we do forward bends? Mm -hmm. What are the benefits of twists? So we don't just learn the foot goes here, the knee goes here, the shoulder does this, the head does this. It's what's the benefit, what's the purpose of that? Mm. So you get that kind of behind the scenes um, understanding, which then empowers you when you're in other yoga classes, yeah. you know, and you're hearing a cue and you're going, hmm, that's an interesting cue. Mm. Um, and I think that's a, uh, another thing I really liked is that we really asked people to notice how is this cue, how is this pose landing in your body? What do you mm. notice? Mm. You know, people say, well, should I feel it here? Should I feel it here? Right. Where do you feel it? Right. Where do you feel it? And trust mm. your own body. It's like, you know, you don't come home with me when I do my home practice, so mm. I need to know in my own body. Yeah. So getting people to have a relationship with their own body. I think that's a really common feature, maybe be, certainly beyond yoga, but I think the questions are framed around this right-wrong duality or this exactly how should it happen, is this right or is this wrong, how much, how little, and um, it sounds like there's more of an inquiry base. Much more inquiry based. Yeah. yeah, I think you hit it on the nose, is that I may give a cue, mm -hmm. and sometimes I actually tell people, don't before you do the cue, just check in with yourself. Does that sound like a good idea for my body today mm. so don't just blindly do it because I said that mm. check it out yeah no not today I like that mm -hmm. one thing I found helpful is I say listen to yourself first and the teacher second right <laughs> listen to your body first then listen to your mind yeah I mean let the mind be the student actually mm. yeah yeah All right and um, you know and that's an interesting thing as well I know Scott Anderson and I'm going to talk to him a little bit more about this but oh, that great. concept of listening to your body and and I know it's 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 a really common phrase, right? And, yeah. Um, and I think it's it's well meaning, you know, mm -hmm. listening rather than just directing the body. But it sounds like um, I know that he has a perspective on on what is really the context around listening to your body, and oh, yeah. we may not be equipped as well as we think, uh, and our students might not be as well. Yeah, I think he'll tell you. Let me predict. Okay, put money on this. <laughs> Scott will say the four most useless words in a yoga class are mm. listen to your body. Mm. Because it tends to reify people's stories. Oh, mm. I can't do yoga. I'm too heavy. I'm too this. I'm too little that. Um, mm. uh, they don't know how to listen. So that's our job partly is to help them give them some points of focus mm. you know inquiry you know how far can you know if you keep the hip down how far does that leg go out before you start feeling a little resistance mm. um, so you're kind of giving people something to listen for yes rather than just like saying listen to your body oh I'm too fat for this posture it feels uncomfortable or oh my I'm so stiff mm -hmm. I, what time is dinner and all this I mean I can imagine um, it sounds like if we're just listening to these inner stories, um, we don't know what to listen for. And then they won't come back to yoga class mm. because you've, you've asked them something unreasonable, especially if they're a new person yeah. in a yoga class. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, yeah, I think that's, that's a wonderful insight. And um, so in terms of teaching the 200-hour course, I understand you're now going to be uh, expanding to a 300 hour course, what's the difference in the curriculum between mm. those two? Mm -hmm. So in the 200 hour course, that's people learning 
poses. Uh, they learn about Indian uh, the philosophy, mm-hmm. yogic philosophy. Um, you know, they learn about the yamas and the niyamas and a little bit of the history. And so, and there are, um, people can become credentialed as a yoga instructor in the 200-hour program. Mm-hmm. Um, again, some people do that. Some people just want to just want to learn how to do the poses and ha- get a meditation practice, and we can help them with that. The 500-hour level just takes it to a whole nother level. Mm. So in the 500, looking much more deeply um, at um, uh, how do the bones move? Mm. Uh, how does How does your breathing affect the structure of the bones? How does it move the bones? How, and then what about the organs? We spend a whole module, a week, on the organs of the body and looking at how does the body hold tension in various organs and how can we tease that apart? Mm. And then we look at um, fascia in the last module. And that's kind of... It's really the most fun. It, it, you bring you by this time. You have quite a few tools in your toolbox about the organs, how the bones move, how breathing is a tool, and uh, so now you're looking at all this connective tissue from the tip of your toe to the crown of your head, mm-hmm. and looking for how can I help a person come into greater ease in their body. So. You might, well, again, you might like it for your own personal practice. It's helped me tremendously in my own drop-in classes, or it's helped mm. me develop series of classes with a particular focus. Right. Um, and it's also helped, you know, if I work one-on-one with a person, uh, then I feel like I've got a great toolbox to help a person find greater ease in their body. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have seen that a lot, because it seems like in, in for a serious student or somebody who wants to go deeper, you know, a 200-hour program is really the only way to get the yoga philosophy, to get mm-hmm. into the real subtle anatomy, mm-hmm. uh, and then to, you know, to feel confident teaching. I think a lot of people have no interest in teaching at a studio, but maybe they'd like to teach at their next family mm-hmm. reunion or, mm-hmm. or their next vacation or teach a friend or their husband or wife. Um, I think having the confidence to put together a class and to just have a personal skill, um, I think that's significant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you touch on the idea of service here. You know, mm. how can I be of benefit to others? Yeah. And, you know, maybe my family member could use a little something. Although I have to say, family members are often the most reluctant to hear anything <laughs> from you That's or true. from me. Um, but, yeah, traveling, there are people that you can help. Mm. People after your classes, you know, somebody has a question. Um, so it, it's a wonderful tool to help um, another human being. Yeah. And it really sounds like that could, especially the 300 hour, may be helpful for like a Pilates instructor or, you know, a personal trainer or anybody who's working with other people in the mm. health and wellness industry. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like they would get a real comprehensive look at how to apply some of the values and the principles of yoga into their own practice, too. Yeah. And even if you've taken 200 hour programs from other teachers, mm-hmm. I think this um, alignment yoga curriculum is so comprehensive mm-hmm. and it's so elegantly delivered yeah. that um, I think, you know, uh, like Diane has taken, some people have taken five different trainings, yeah. and it's like, oh my gosh, there's something going on here with alignment yoga that's mm-hmm. really unique. Um, so I encourage people, even if you've taken a 200, give this one a whirl and, and see what you notice. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And you've also had the experience of leading retreats kind of off-site, like mm-hmm. at the coast. Um, mm-hmm. And so what would you say for people who are just thinking about starting that or who've done it a few times and are looking for a little advice? You know, how do you go about that? And, and mm. what's the difference between teaching in your home studio and taking people off on a retreat? Mm. Yeah, first I'd say that retreat is a really special time. You know, you can go to a class couple, you know, every week, every couple couple times a week. Uh, but actually spending focused time when this is your this is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Really there's something different that happens. And I think you could ask Scott about this, but there's been some research about that that oh, interesting. that time and in retreat things go 
the brain just works differently. It gets mm -hmm. into some zone. Yeah. I'm. This is what I'm remembering. Mm -hmm. But my that's my experience is that mm -hmm. um, I explore things deeply. Um, you know, you're doing some yoga in the morning, maybe a little bit in the afternoon. You're doing some meditation, and there you're with people together, and people are having conversations, and so there's just a little more focus there. Yeah. Um, so I think for somebody just thinking about going on a retreat, if you haven't been on a yoga retreat, go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for leading a retreat, it's been really helpful to have a partner, a co-leader. Yeah. And again, having a team has been helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody to take care of finances. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to go to the location, yeah. know the place, mm -hmm. um, so that you can recommend here are the restaurants, Here's, do we rent cars, do we not rent cars? What are we gonna do if some people wanna go off site to do some other field trips? You know, are you going to have field trips? Or are you not gonna have field trips? Mm -hmm. Are you, um, and I really like the retreats where we're all together, we're staying in some community of some kind together, like a Brighton Bush or mm -hmm. um, um, at the coast, you know. So um, having meals together, um, and again, having a focus. What is your focus going to be for the retreat? Right. You know, it's got to be something a little different than your regular drop-in class. So right. why should they come all the way to the, the coast? Well, just spending a whole weekend is great with this kind of focus. So Yeah. Um, yes. But giving them a little something special. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like there's kind of two, two reasons, I'd say, the main reasons that I've noticed uh, why people would go on a retreat is, one, I mean, I think when people go on a regular vacation, uh, it's almost more stressful than than being at home. You know, yes. you're planning; it's expensive. You're um, you're you're cramped together. Um, you're trying to get everything in, and, and I almost sometimes see people come back from vacation. And they say they need another vacation. Now. Right, a vacation <laughs> from your vacation, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, it sounds like you know, with the yoga retreat, it's like what we really need from a vacation is that to you know tap into um, a healthy rhythm. You know, with ourselves, mm -hmm. with our, our food, our company, getting in touch with nature, you know, finding a healthy lifestyle um, where we're not pressured to go work and make money or t take care of all the responsibilities. Yeah. Uh, it almost seems like that could be by itself just a recharge. And I'd say on the other hand, um, it seems like people who are looking for that spiritual depth, you know, mm -hmm. the time and space to then yeah. go deeper than they usually can in a context or a place that's conducive for that mm -hmm. um so would you would you agree with those kind of two yes. categories is there yeah um definitely yeah. i mean it's like can you take your watch off can you take your phone off can you leave the computer yeah and just walk away from wi-fi <laughs> for a week you know <laughs> it's amazing yeah how you kind of learn how attached you are to oh your your devices and things and it's like Oh my goodness! There was yeah. like a little anxiety not to take my phone, you know. Yeah. Or, uh. Well, I think that's probably <laughs> even more needed than ever. You exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah. And have all your meals taken care of. Yeah. Somebody's planning and organizing for you, and you're free to do any of it, and you're free to do none of it. Mm -hmm. It's your time, you know. Mm -hmm. So even though we provide. Oh, well, we've got a couple of retreats. Should I tell you about those? Or, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's one coming up the end of October that Diane, Butera, and I are doing. We're going to Yahats, mm -hmm. the October 27th through nice. the 30th, just before Halloween. Wonderful. Before the sugar hits, and uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to go to Yahats and um, yeah, meals. We'll have our those things taken care of, and mm. it'll be sweet. And then we've got another retreat opportunity to go to Yalapa. Mexico, near Puerto Vallarta, in a, a, a beautiful location. Oh my goodness, you're just in paradise. Mm. So not only are you getting your meditation, your yoga, your meals, um, really there aren't any cars in this location. I've heard about that. Yeah. So there is Wi-Fi, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, really kind of stepping back out of your world and mm. life is simple. And just to, yeah, you don't have to answer any phones or work. It's just, mm. it's easy. And what would be the biggest um, difference for you from, say, leading a coastal retreat 
to mm. going international. It seems like kind of a whole different tier of yeah. complexity. Yeah. Um, what's been your experience with that process? Um, yeah, you're taking people to a different culture. Mm. Maybe the language is different. So how do you negotiate language? Do you have interpreters? You also have people's passports. And I guess my the big thing point is make sure everybody's passport has got at least six months oh, to go yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. we ha we've had a couple of people find out that uh, there were only a month left on their passport and they weren't going to be able to go. Oh, no. So they were spent some money to expedite their passport. Yeah. So those kind of little logistical things. Mm -hmm. um, you're thinking about um, you know taking a first aid kit, mm -hmm taking some, you know, maybe there's some other medications that you want to have around, like for mm. <laughs> people have food poisoning, can okay. you make, how can you anticipate what they might experience and mm. kind of be prepared for that. Water filtration sometimes, uh, you know, if you're going to India or something, mm -hmm. uh, carry that grapefruit seed extract with you. Mm. Um, anyway, so there are those kind of health concerns and creature comforts, how can you consider people's needs. Yeah. And you probably have pretty close communication with the retreat center yes. you know, leading up to it, I imagine. Yeah, and so like when we went to Hawaii, mm -hmm. that was Diane and I. There, mm -hmm. there, was, there wasn't really any other person in Hawaii. There was a little bit of a person helping us out a little bit, mm -hmm. but we were mostly doing it on our own. Yeah. Uh, going to Yalapa, there's a woman, it is her yoga studio, I mean it's Oh my gosh, it's her yoga paradise. I've heard about that, it's, yeah. It's up on kind of a mountainside, and you're overlooking the ocean. It's mm. open-air yoga studio. And she prepares all the, you know, has the meals prepared. She has, you know, every need taken care of. So even as a yoga facilitator, a leader, there's very little to do. Mm. So you look for those kind of locations where somebody else has got the boots on the ground and can do a lot of the work for you. So you can enjoy the retreat mm. as well. Well, I know from personal experience, I mean, like just the difference between practicing in your own room and maybe it's it's not been cleaned up and maybe there's noises going on and mm -hmm. and how nice it is to come to a studio where everything's mm -hmm. set up and everything's ready and clean and comfortable and then take it to the next level when you go to this beautiful natural place. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just seeing how influential the environment is to the depth of experience you can have. I know firsthand... Um, it can be life-changing. I mean, it can mm -hmm. be a very powerful experience. Mm -hmm. Once you've done it, it's like a yearly commitment. Yeah, right. Where am I going to do my yoga retreat this year or mm -hmm. a meditation retreat? I'm about to go to Creston, Colorado with Scott. Mm -hmm. 9,000 feet elevation. Wow. Um, for We get up meditation at 5.30 in the morning. Mm. Do a little Pilates, a little yoga, a little med more meditation a couple times a day. And then... Just this beautiful expanse to go walking, journaling, bird watching, just down regulating the whole nervous system for a whole week. Mm. Yeah. That sounds like paradise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that you'd like to share for people who mm -hmm. are interested in a teacher training program? Like, what are the main obstacles, or what, what do people fear or worry about um, mm. that would stop them from taking this step? Right. Well, um, it's a chunk of time. Mm -hmm. So for the, the 200 hour program, we meet Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's all day. So Friday, for some people, that's a work day. Right. So that's a little bit of a hardship to work on. How do you? Who's going to take care of the kids, mm -hmm. the, feed the cats and dogs? Mm -hmm. um, and it's for eight months, mm -hmm. three days. So there's plenty of time to do your homework and practice. We do a lot of practice uh, at home. Um, so I guess there's an expense piece that you, you know, you can expect that, but you have to budget that in. But we. We do offer some scholarships, mm -hmm. so if that's a hardship, you can talk to Diane or myself, and or somebody can, and ask us. We're happy to help with that, make that possible. Yeah. We do everything we can to make it possible. It can be a payment plan, that kind of mm -hmm. a thing. For the 500-hour training, that's seven days in a row, mm -hmm. every six months. Mm -hmm. So that means taking a week out of your life. Mm -hmm. That can be a hard fit ship. Yeah. Um, but again, it's like a retreat. It's like dive in. Yeah. And somebody else is taking care of the dishes and the dogs and mm. 
all of that stuff. And so that's like a two-year program? So That's a two-year program. So it's four complete weeks every six months for two years. Yeah. yeah. You know, that just makes me think, too. I know that there's some yoga teacher training programs that are becoming very popular. Go to Costa Rica, three weeks, you get your 200-hour certificate. Yeah. And I, I don't see how that works for your brain to mm -hmm. absorb that much material yeah. in that short a time. I mm -hmm. mean, um, the little I know about... The brain, how the brain works, mm. it's not conducive. Yeah. So, it might be nice, but it wouldn't. I had think of it as a more of a uh, like a retreat. Yeah. That kind of a program. If you're really looking to be a yoga teacher, mm. be serious about it and take something where there's you're being worked and challenged. Yeah. Mm. I, I would agree, and, and I think there's, like you said, there are some value to those total immersion programs, mm -hmm. and, and they are quite popular, and it yeah, can be yeah. nice, um, but I would agree. I think having an, an, an eight months is a wonderful amount of time, and you're, you're uh, digesting it bite by bite rather than you know, eating the whole cow you know, at once. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I wonder like, if, you, if it was your very first program. I mean, I know my recommendation would be to do a longer one, you mm -hmm. know, an eight year, an eight month or a two year program. Mm -hmm. And then after you've had that, maybe your second 200 hour program would be mm -hmm. an immersion. That might be mm -hmm. a perfectly yeah, fine be. follow up. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think people should look for if they are researching their first 200 hour program or 300 hour program? Mm -hmm. There's, look at a lot of them. Yeah. Look at a, no, they're not all the same, even though, they have, each program has to meet some standard according to Yoga Alliance right. uh, to be accredited school. But each person brings their own, has their own focus. Yeah. So um, you want to check out what is your focus? What is it that you do? And what is it that you do? And, and just ask. And so you want to find, like, this is the program that feels right for me. Yeah. You know, maybe you're more interested in yoga philosophy and you want to look at the sacred texts. Well, not all programs focus on that. Mm -hmm. Some people focus more on mindfulness or on, on alignment of, you know, the healthy body, mind. Mm -hmm. um, so look for what you're interested in. Yeah. yeah. Don't just right. take the first one that comes along. Right. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And I think also references, you know, I think talking to people who've taken it. Yes. Um, I know that's how I found my first 200-hour program was, you know, just talking to people that I trusted and, and I got a good sense. I looked on the yeah. website and took some classes. And I think that was, um, you know, I think I confirmed my choice more and more through that mm -hmm. discovery. And I think talking to the teacher. Yeah. Ask your questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you don't feel like there's a relationship there, then maybe that's not where you want to be. You're yeah. spending good money and uh, mm -hmm. you want to have, you want to be able to get your questions answered and mm -hmm. your needs met. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So um, I'd like to mention the programs that you will be doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So the Alignment Yoga 200-hour teacher training program will be offered in Eugene Yoga from October 20th through May 20th. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's so that's about eight months. Mm -hmm. And um, you will be leading that with Jennifer Jameson. Yes. Who's a beloved teacher here at Eugene oh, Yoga. Oh, she's awesome. She's, yeah, just fantastic. Um, just, just a real incredible teacher. And your 300-hour program, uh, which will, which is called a 500-hour, because you have to take a 200-hour first, right? Correct. And so that's with you and Katie Gordon. Yes. And she is a body worker and also just a fantastic teacher. Awesome. Uh, both Jennifer and Katie have gone through Scott Anderson's alignment program, so yes. they're all on the same page with you. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be January 29, 2018. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then you do have some retreats coming up. You said... Um, uh, there were a few coming right. up. Right. There are yah yahats at the, here at the coast, something close, October 27th through the 30th. And then uh, beginning of the year in January 23rd, no, the 13th through the 20th of January okay. next year, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go to Yalapa, Mexico, near Puerto Vallarta. And uh, so you can, those are all on the website. You can sign okay. up there and um, go experience a first retreat if you haven't been on a yoga retreat. Both of those are wonderful, will be wonderful. Close yeah. and far. Yeah. 
Wonderful. And, and so those are, we can find information on the Eugene Yoga website. Yes. And they'll have it under their workshops or series. And then they'll also have the instructor trainings under, I think it's instructor training tab. Yeah. Um, so people can go there to check it out. And they can also look on my uh, website as well, yeah. yogawareness.fit. Great. Yoga Awareness. And the A is Y-O-G-A-W-A-R-E-N-E-S-S. Correct. Dot F-I-T. Correct. All right. And we'll have that linked up in the show notes so you can find that easily. Uh, Julia, this has been so wonderful to talk with you. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your wisdom. Thank you. Uh, Namaste. Namaste. And thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time.